The idea, I think, that's important by doing work that involves history is to see these problems that are inside of ourselves that make us flinch as problems that are out there coming at us that we can deal with and we know where they came from. And the reason that we're working on film right now is to understand how to be able to unpack this business of interiority, what's going on inside of ourselves that makes ourselves feel small or makes ourselves feel uncertain or guilty or whatever it is. And understand that there's so much coming at you that is much more important to think about and respond to than that, that will work with that instead of with this other thing, this lizard brain that's never going away. So that takes us, strangely enough, to Gone with the Wind, a movie that I'm sure you know tons and tons and tons about. We're gonna spend an entire section on Gone with the Wind, not to review the plot, not to talk about Rhett Butler, and not to talk about Clark Gable, and not to talk about Vivian Lee, and not to talk about all that stuff, because you've been through that. And if you haven't, you can just go ahead and do it. The point that I wanna make here, after having talked about the Birth of a Nation film the last time, is that this is a film that's very different from Birth of a Nation. Remember Birth of a Nation? D.W. Griffith said, come with me this way, I'm gonna recreate history for you. I'm gonna sit you down in the middle of what happened and you're gonna feel it exactly the way that they did it. Gone with the Wind is a melodrama. Gone with the Wind is a romance. Gone with the Wind is not historical reality being given to you, but instead, an invitation, which is a very seductive invitation, get involved in this fun story that draws you in, that takes you into an alternate world, a world of gentlemen and ladies and cotillions and balls and parties, that's the plantation, then the tragedy and drama and terrible suffering of the Civil War, then the struggle to rebuild and to come into the New South after the war is over, all overlain by this wonderful romance between these people who are so much more beautiful, so much more refined, so much more real than anything you can think of, that you begin to participate in their fantasy. The claim of this film, as a fantasy, is simply to make you a consumer of drama, to make you feel good about yourself by getting involved with them. The idea of using history as a way to be able to create a pleasant and affirming alternate reality where there's a happy ending is very, very different than Griffith claiming this is history written with lightning. The idea that escapism versus supposed reality in the Griffith film separates these two films, but at the same time shows you two different examples of this law of gravity working together is really important for us to try and wrap our minds around because in both films, there's one thing that is consistent between the two of them. They tell the same story. The story of before the war, everything was fine. During the war, everything went bad and black people were out of control. After the war, it's all knit up again. Rhett and Scarlet find their destiny. Terror remains. Black people are the price that gets paid to make the nation come together again, for families to come together again. While Gone with the Wind is a fantasy, and while Birth of a Nation is a claim that you're living history all over again, the plot line of both is identical. It all involves a happy republic destroyed by making enslaved people free, and then being reunited and re-knit again as a consequence of white people finding peace, happiness, and a future with one another. You've been brave so long, Miss Scarlett. You just gotta go on being brave. Think about your Paul like he used to be. I can't think about Paul. Can't think of anything but that $300. Ain't no good thinking about that, Miss Scarlett. Ain't nobody got that much money. Nobody but Yankees and Scalloway got that much money now. Now that you've seen the clips, you probably are also aware that uh, American theaters now are very reluctant to show Gone with the Wind. There's been a big debate about whether the implicit and highly explicit racism that is evident throughout the film in some fundamental way disqualifies itself as a film that serves the best interests 
of the American people. That's a debate that I don't want to get into, but I do want to make one point very, very clear about this film. That this film, seen from innocent eyes of ordinary white people, is nothing but a really good story. It's a really good story about dramatic and fulfilling things that happen that uh, include uh, moments of danger, moments of conflict, and moments of deep reconciliation and fulfillment. The takeaway from this film is that it is a big, giant, successful package for people who want to watch it with innocent eyes. If you want to put on your glasses to decode the film through the lens of the law of gravity, what you'll see is that the people who pay the price for the beginning, the middle, and the end of this happy story are all the enslaved people who originally lived at Tara with Scarlett O'Hara and go through the whole process with her where she is successful and they are marginalized and they become victims.